Good morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another video. If you're new, my name is Lee aka Rolling Thunder and in today's video we are going to be discussing quite a few issues. So if that is of interest to you and you'd like to know more, sit back, relax, grab yourselves a cup of tea and without further ado, let us get into the video. So ladies and gentlemen, how are we all doing? I hope you're doing well. First and foremost, I would like to apologize for my distinct lack of content. Um, I have been going through a lot emotionally over the last couple of weeks. If you guys remember a few weeks ago, I uh, did a video about my mum sadly passing away back in October of 2023. And uh, even though I said in that previous video that I think I was o over and dealing with my mum's passing, I'm really not, I'm, I'm lying to myself when, I, when I'm saying this and when I said that as well. Um, so I am still going through the grieving process, so that's partially why there's not been a lot of content on the channel over the last couple of weeks. So I do apologize for that. I know it's no excuse, but you know, life gets in the way sometimes. Uh, and also I've been suffering issues with the R1, which is what we will discuss momentarily. Now, with, with regards to uh, what is actually going on with the R1, I shall give you a brief rundown of what's been happening over the last couple of weeks. Firstly, I've been suffering with a horrible, horrible front end vibration, which I've not been able to get rid of up until literally two days ago. And this vibration has been plaguing the bike for, well, probably about three months, I'd say but I've just never mentioned it till now. And uh, the only way I could describe it is, if anyone has ever ridden over something like a, a cattle grid or cobbled, cobbled stones, you know, the, the, like the sort of thing you see like in the, in rural towns around the UK, like uh, up north and like where, where Coronation Street's uh, films, you know, those sort of cobbles. If you've ever ridden over those things, that's the sort of feeling I was getting from the front end of the R1. So without being too convoluted and too long-winded about that, that is basically what I've been suffering with for the last couple of weeks. Well, months even. Up until I did some uh, in-depth research into certain elements regarding the bike and the way it handles and so on. Now what I've had to do, believe it or not, I've gone through two sets of discs three sets of pads. I've had the front wheel straightened by those lovely people down at uh, Motorliner in Kent. Uh, I've had new uh, front wheel bearings and a new front tire. And still, the vibration issue persisted. It wasn't until I did some super, 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 super deep cleaning. And when I say deep cleaning, I mean, literally, I spent about an hour and a half cleaning each caliper, not just externally, but internally as well. I cleaned and degreased and brake cleaned every single piston. And with these brakes being six pot calipers, there's six pistons per caliper. So every single piston got the treatment of being pumped, being rotated, being cleaned with a toothbrush with hot soapy water, being degreased, then having brake cleaner fired at them, and then hand dried with a towel. So if you can imagine I've done that six times per caliper, that's 12 times I've had to go through the same process. So I literally did all that, spent about, let's like say, about three hours cleaning each caliper individually and every component within each caliper individually. I did find that uh, at least three pistons were sticking on one side and two were on the other, I believe, of each caliper. So yeah, my uh, maintenance of brakes have been lacking severely over the last couple of weeks, as I've already mentioned. And uh, as well as that, I took the liberty of taking the discs off the wheel and I degreased, deglazed, brake cleaned, got all the dust out, the rivets, got all the brake dust that were accumulated within the actual carrier and the uh, actual braking material on the discs. 
because uh, I was shown a little trick that you can do with a uh, wide blade flathead screwdriver where you can actually dig all the grime and brake dust out from within the uh, like I say the braking surfaces so I did that then once everything was reassembled everything was torque to spec and believe me when I say it was torque to spec it was torque to spec to the point one of a newton meter and then when that was done I reinstalled everything I also cleaned the brake pads themselves like the the um, the backing material and I also took the liberty of uh, scuffing the actual braking surface of the pads to make them a bit more clean because I think they may have got saturated with something somewhere along the lines there's a Nino Nino coming towards me I then bled the brakes thoroughly and when I say thoroughly again I spent over an hour bleeding these fucking things with the help of the uh, future Mrs Rolling Thunder we bled the master cylinder we bled each individual caliper at least twice must have got through at least half a bottle of brake fluid I mean these bottles aren't that big but you get the idea I mean it's like that sort of big but went through like three quarters of a bottle just to make sure the the brakes were bled as best as they could be then when everything was put back together I rode to work on the Tuesday or the Wednesday whenever it was and I can say confidently that the vibration has been reduced to a manageable level now bearing in mind that I'm not a motorcycle mechanic in any way shape or form I follow videos on YouTube I follow advice through people that I speak to on Facebook I follow advice through the guys at my work and obviously Ryan at RMC as well I follow his advice because he's uh, literally the god on social media when it comes to dealing with uh, Yamahas and if you haven't already seen it Ryan has just started his own YouTube channel which is uh, again his business name so Ryan's Motorcycle Centre I shall put a link to his channel either in a card above or in the description so you guys can go and check him out he's only done one video so far bless him but um, if you like your your motorcycle content involving uh, how to's and uh, technical advice and stuff like that when it comes to motorcycles then Ryan is probably one of the best people to watch in that respect and that's not taking anything away from any of the other uh, content creators that do those kind of videos like uh, mechanics and so on like uh, uh, Zach the master mechanic who works with uh, 650 Eeb um, Blockhead who works on Harleys primarily but you get the gist it's not taking anything away from those guys it's just that if you are in the UK and you want someone that's a no bullshit channel that tells you as it is gives you the advice you need advises you on the parts you need and the services that you need and you know just generally a a straight up kind of guy then Ryan is definitely one of these people that you need to follow and speaking of Ryan nicely it that nicely allows me to segue into my next thing that I want to talk about and that is work that Ryan has done on the bike now he's uh, done me a, f a huge huge favor and uh, replaced my clutch pack for me with a SBS clutch kit now I don't know how much they are or what they actually do but all I can tell you is is that the clutch feels a million times better than it did about six months ago also uh, on the agenda with regards to what Ryan has done for me as you can see we now have the Hell Performance Brake Master Cylinder good morning sir installed on the R1 I did get Ryan to do it for me because basically I tried fitting something aftermarket uh, moss cylinders and clutch lever and stuff like that by a company called Akasato and uh, no word of a lie I had such a fucking hard time fitting them and nearly lost my mind and this cement mixer in front of me is dropping water or something everywhere and I don't like it but I can't get past him because he's taking up the whole entire fucking road 12 seconds later now with the installation of the helm uh, moss cylinder the only one they do is a 19 by 20 master cylinder which is what I've got on here at the moment and needless to say 
I am hugely, hugely impressed with the, the build quality, the usability, and the feel that I get through the lever. Bearing in mind that I've been used to the standard master cylinder, which isn't bad, don't get me wrong, it's not bad. And uh, I've been using aftermarket levers and stuff like that. But, with the uh, prospect of doing track days in the next year or so, or this year, should I say, I feel like I need a little bit more bite, could do with a little bit more performance. And uh, for, I can't remember how much this was, I think it was like 200 quid or something like that. This master cylinder is nuts. Where it's got the adjustable ratio in terms of the span of the lever, and also you can change the, uh, the span of the pivot as well. Like for example, when I say the pivot, I'm talking about this bit up here where the uh, master cylinder bolts, uh, the lever bolts onto the master cylinder, you can change the ratio there, as well as changing the actual span of the lever. It does make for a rather progressive experience. So with that being said, the, the introduction of fully, fully clean discs, new wheel bearings, a straightened wheel, a new front tire, a super, super, super clean set of calipers and clean brake pads, and the introduction of the new master cylinder has all resulted in a much better, much more confidence inspiring braking experience for the R1. Also, I have uh, gone to a long clutch lever, which again has helped quite a bit. Now, bear in mind, this isn't an OEM R1 lever. It's basically some cheap Chinese shit that I had lying around. And what I've had to do, which again is going to sound rather pikey-ish, I've used the actual actuator from my, uh, I think it was Litec or Evotec, whichever brand it was, short levers that I had on the bike when I first got her. And I swapped out the lever part of the perch for this long one. Believe it or not, this long lever is actually off my 1098, which sounds a bit weird, but it works. For the purpose of what I'm trying to achieve, it works. I've also got rid of my uh, OEM grips, and initially I did replace them with, I think they were called the Pro Sport uh, P17s, I think it was. But now I've gone all in and bought myself some Renthal medium compound uh, sports grips. And they are amazing. Single piece construction, no layers of plastic, no this, no that, no the other. Uh, Renthal do make different uh, thicknesses and compounds of grips. I just chose to go with the medium ones because that's what most people generally run for street use. And they seem to be doing well for me. If I had the money to change them every couple of weeks, then I probably would have gone for the slightly softer compound. But uh, as we know, with the way things are increasing in terms of cost of living and so forth, you know, I'm not made of money. And I know these grips are relatively cheap, but that's not the point. I can't afford to replace them every six weeks or every three months or whatever it is. So I went with the, uh, the medium compound because they just seem to offer the best overall performance on paper. And I've had these on the bike for about a month. And I have to, I have to admit, they feel lovely. Also, if you hadn't already guessed, I'm now using the DJI Osmo Action 4 mo uh, action camera primarily because I'm just sick and tired of GoPros they pissed me off my Hero 10 was good but it wasn't brilliant the Osmo Action 4 which I currently have on my chin which is what you're listening to me through and what you are seeing is probably the best sub 500 pound camera you can get for motor vlogging the Hero 12 currently retails at about 350 400 pounds likewise so does the uh, the insta360 ace pro which is insta360's attempt of a hero 12 stroke osmo action 4 hybrid i mean don't get me wrong if i didn't already have the osmo 4 
I would have potentially gone with the 360, but I haven't got the patience nor the money. Again, like I said, the cost of living has gone through the roof. Also, if you haven't already noticed, I've got a little sticker just here on my switch gear with a T and a minus and a plus. The reason for that is, is I keep fucking forgetting which way around the tension is on the clutch lever, uh, the clutch cable. So what I've done, I put this little sticker on there, which uh, correlates to this turn dial. Now the minus means to push it away, to loosen the tension, and the plus this way is to increase the tension. And that's all down to the fact that my memory is getting worse by the year, I'm not going to lie. And uh, I keep forgetting which way around the fucking thing's meant to be. So, yeah, that's basically what's been going on for me in a nutshell over the last couple of weeks. Because, uh, like I said, I've not really been, I've not really been, you know, in the right frame of mind to be doing uh, videos. And yes, okay, it's no excuse for feeling shit when I'm a content creator, but it is what it is. You know, I haven't been in a great mindset. I haven't really been that motivated to do videos because of, like I say, the emotional shit that I've been going through with, with still coming to terms with the loss of my mum and stuff like that. But like I said, that's all done and dusted now. And uh, I'm all the better for it. got the bike to a point where I can ride her and ride her well I'm getting more and more confident on her as the weather warms up and uh, I'm just generally in a happier place as of now but anyway ladies and gentlemen I have rattled on long enough I hope you've enjoyed the video if you've got any comments or questions please feel free to put it in the comments box down below and I shall do my best to answer them as quickly and as efficiently as I possibly can but for now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you have been amazing. I have been Lee, AK Rolling Thunder, saying look after yourselves, look after each other, stay safe on the road, be aware of COVID-19, be safe, be happy. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, adios.